Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss the concept of a Cauchy sequence. We're going to introduce that concept. So Cauchy sequences is the topic for this video. Cauchy sequences. Okay, uh, so the idea of a Cauchy sequence is firstly, well, it is a sequence. So um, you start off with a metric space. They can be defined in abstract metric spaces. They do not need to be defined in just uh, real numbers. Uh, so you def start with an abstract metric space, X and D, uh, which, remember, is a set uh, big X uh, here, uh, along with a metric. So if you have two elements of this set, X and Y, uh, you have uh, some number ascribed to their distance, to their to that pair. You ascribe a distance between them, the distance between X and Y. So that's what we have. Okay, and then we can have a sequence in this metric space. So we can have uh, a sequence is a function, uh, strictly a sequence is a function from the natural numbers into your metric space, big X. Uh, so basically what it does is it ascribes to every uh, natural number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it ascribes an element of the metric space, so we'll call that little x1, little x2, little x3, little x4, etc. Okay? Uh, so these are all in this metric space. We have little x1, little x2, little x3, etc. And they might converge onto a limit. Uh, so, and we've discussed what it means for them to converge onto a limit. The concept of a Cauchy sequence is slightly different. Uh, the concept of a Cauchy sequence is that, um, that the terms in the sequence are getting closer and closer together. So I'm going to write down the statement of uh, what it means for a sequence to be Cauchy, and then we'll discuss it further. So a sequence, let's say x, x, which is equal to x1, x2, x3, etc. onwards, um, is Cauchy if for all epsilon greater than zero, so for all epsilon, uh, real numbers epsilon which is greater than zero, there exists a big N which is an element of the natural numbers such that if little n and little m are greater than or equal to big N, uh, then it implies that the distance between x little n and x little m is less than epsilon. So what this is saying, basically, is if we draw another picture, we have x1, x2, x3, and it goes on x4, x5, and basically what you have to be able to do is you give me any epsilon you want that is greater than zero, I have to be able to find you a big N uh, in this sequence, so let's say x big N here, so there are lots of other points in between. So you have to be able to go and find a point in the sequence such that after that point, for all points beyond that big N, so this is the big N here, so that's the big N there, uh, you have to be able to take any two elements of the sequence beyond there, so this is that x little n and x little m, so I'm saying take any uh, little n and little m which are beyond big N, and though the distance between those two points, whichever two points you pick, so uh, let me get keep going with the colour pen. So the, these are this is this bit here. These two bits are beyond this x big N, uh, and their distance, the distance between them. So let's draw this little line here, and that distance will colour in yellow here. This distance has to be less than the epsilon. So basically, pick any two points. Beyond, um, beyond or in fact equal to big N. So you can pick X big N if you like, and you pick any two of these points. Uh, so X, you could take X N big N plus one, or and X big N plus two. But you have to pick any two points in the sequence that are beyond that point, and the distance between them has to be less than epsilon. And that's for any two you pick. Okay. So that's the definition of a Cauchy sequence, and in a sense, what it means, well, in a very real sense, what it means is that uh, as if you go far enough along in the sequence, uh, the distance between the terms gets arbitrarily small, basically. If you, uh, if you want to, uh, to all of them to get arbitrarily small, you can, uh, you give me as small as you like, basically, I can find you a point further enough along in the sequence when that wish will be true, basically. Okay, so let's do an example, uh, a very basic example. So we'll go into the most intuitive metric space of them all, which is the real numbers with the Euclidean metric on it. 
Uh, so here is the real line. Okay, and we're going to take our sequence as uh, the sequence, uh, so we're going to let x uh, map the natural numbers onto the real line. So this is our sequence, x is our sequence. And specifically, x is going to take a natural number onto 1 divided by that natural number. So it's going to take 1 onto 1 over 1. So it's going to take, uh, let's have 1 here. So that's our first element of the sequence. It's going to take 2 onto 1 over 2. So a half is here. It's going to take 3 onto 1 over 3, etc. Uh, so uh, we'll go down and we'll get a third, a quarter, a, a fifth, etc. And it obviously is converging on zero in this metric space. So this is a sequence that we use all the, all the time. Okay, so we want to prove that this is a Cauchy sequence. So we need to prove exactly what we say up here, that for all epsilon, so uh, it, the way that we would say to prove this is we'd say, let epsilon be greater than zero. So we take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. We now have to find a point in this sequence after which, so we need to find some point in this sequence, we'll say this is 1 over big N, after which all of the terms uh, beyond that, beyond or equal to that, and obviously all of those terms are getting closer and closer to zero, all of the terms beyond or equal to that, if you pick any two of them, their distance is going to be less than that epsilon. Well, quite simply, uh, if we, uh, because all of these terms are never going to go beyond zero, all of the terms after any big e a one over e one over big N are going to be within this interval here. So, if we make this interval less than uh, of size less than epsilon, then that's the furthest distance they could possibly be. They couldn't be anything greater than that. So the distance between them would be uh, between any two that you picked would be less than epsilon. So all I need to do is make sure that the distance of this little blue interval here that I've highlighted in blue is less than epsilon. And the way that I do that is make sure that the distance between 0 and 1 over big N is less than uh, epsilon. Okay? Uh, so um, the distance between 0 and big N is just equal to uh, the modulus of 1 over N minus 0, which is just equal to 1 over N. So we just need to make sure that 1 over N is less than epsilon, basically, which is just the statement that n is greater than 1 over epsilon. So basically, what, I, what I'm saying to you is if you give me any epsilon and you want me to find a point in this sequence after which, if you, if you go beyond there and pick any two terms of the sequence and ask what is the distance between them, you want it to be less than epsilon. The way I'd do that is I'd say, okay, take 1 over that epsilon that you've given me. So T uh, say, uh, to do a concrete example, have I got a calculator? Excellent. So let's say I want epsilon, I'm going to let epsilon equal 0 0.001, so a thousandth. Okay, so what I'd then do is I'd say, oh no, that's not a very interesting one actually, because when you just, when you take one over it, it just goes to a thousand, which isn't very interesting. Uh, so let's make it some number that's not going to give you a whole number. So let's make it 1562. Hope that's not going to give you a whole number. Okay, so this is our epsilon we're going to use. What I then do is I take 1 over that, so I do 1 divided by 0 0.001562, and I'm sorry if you can't see the calculator screen, uh, it's sort of got a reflection, oh that's my shadow, great. Um, okay, so you get 640 points, so 1 over epsilon is equal to 640.204865. Right, okay. Now, n has to be a natural number. Big N must be a natural number. So you just need to pick any natural number that is greater than that. So we'll just pick, we'll just let big N equal 641. Okay? So if I go in my sequence and I go to the term uh, 1 over 641, if you go be to that term and beyond that term and pick any two any two uh, elements of the sequence beyond there, so let's say we picked 1 over 740 and uh, this other one can be 1 over 800, then the distance between those two is going to be less than uh, this epsilon you wanted here. So let's just confirm that, that the distance between 1 over 800 and 1 over 740, and I just pick those two points arbitrarily. You can pick any of you, any you like. That is the definition of Cauchy sequence. Any you like. You have to be able to find a big N, after which if you pick 
any of the terms from the sequence beyond that big M, uh, then the distance between them needs to be less than epsilon. So the distance between that is going to be equal to uh, what's going to be the modulus of one. I'll write it out in full. Modulus of 170 minus 180. But because one, uh, sorry, over 100, one, one over 740 minus one over 800. Sorry if I just, I don't know what I just said. Um, and uh, because 1 over 740 is greater than 1 over 800, this is just equal to 1 over 740 minus 1 over 800. Okay, so if we now put those two numbers in to the calculator, and I'll put it back into view. So uh, 1 divided by 740, and then we're going to take out, uh, take away 1 and over uh, 800. And we get the number uh, oof, 1 1.01 uh, times 10 to the negative 4. So if we do that, um, so I'll do it over here, it's equal to uh, 0 0.00, and you'll have to put another 0, uh, good practice with standard form here, 1014, I think, is what that is equal to. And that is certainly less than our original epsilon. So we did it, basically. Well, we haven't proven that it didn't work. Uh, but I promise you it does work. So there's a good example of what it means uh, for a sequence to be Cauchy. Uh, and that's a nice, uh, that's the basic introduction to Cauchy sequences. We are going to study these things in so much depth because they are so important.